Hello, welcome to Coding with Indy. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bar chart widget for showing revenue and profit. I recently saw a post by Sean Allen where he used Swift UI chart component to visualize revenue and profit. It looked like this. This widget is excellent in visualizing revenue and profit for your indie side projects or investment portfolios or anything that has is revenue and profit components. The basic idea here is that for each data item, we have two values. First one represents the revenue. The second one represents the cost. The profit or loss will be drawn over the revenue column. This should be fun, so let's get into it. We start from the beginning by creating a Flutter project. Note that if you put minus E at the end of Flutter create command, it will only generate minimal code. This saves us from wasting time deleting a bunch of stuff. We will create a stateless widget called revenue profit chart. We can set the size of the chart by wrapping the chart widget inside size to object. The chart widget API should have a title, subtitle, and a data series. If you like, pass in other visual parameters like background color, text style, and such. When you use this widget, you will pass in a set of data for it to draw. So let's create the data structure for that. So the data structure looks like this. Each data column will have X label, revenue, and cost values. X label will have some month names. We will have a list of these data columns in the data series, along with a bunch of metadata like color values for revenue, profit, and loss. Now let's generate some dummy data outside the widget chart or chart widget and pass it in. Here's some dummy data I generated earlier. Now let's take a look at how the widget is laid out. We put title, subtitle and the custom painter inside column and wrap that with a container. This way we can give it a nice round borders and background color. Note that we have to wrap the custom painter with a expanded widget so it takes up the rest of the column space. Now let's take a look at the chart painter class. Here we pass in the data series and then compute min and max values and set up the paint objects. For us to compute the min and max bar height properly, we need to get these bits right. We draw the column zero up for the revenue amount. The profit is the revenue minus cost. And if the profit is a negative value, then we want a red bar to be drawn down from zero. So with these bar height calculations, we can quickly compute the mean and max values. In the paint function, let's paint the area with the background color so we can see what we are working with. Our chart area has padding from right and bottom for X and Y axis labels. So let's set the chart rect with these values. We can compute the column width easily by dividing the width of the chart rectangle by the number of elements of our data series. The column width is the maximum area for each column. When we draw the actual bars, we will give a little padding to make it look nice, but that's for later. Now that we have column width and chart rect, we can draw the X labels. Here's a function to do just that. For this, we extract out the labels from the list data elements and then draw them in the center of the horizontal space we have for each of the columns. 
draw text centered is a utility function I created earlier. If you have seen my videos before, you will recognize this. Let's quickly have a glance at it. First, it measures the text to be drawn in the given text tile and centers the text on the position given. So this is great when we want to draw a label centered on a point like the X labels. While we are here, please look at the draw text left and draw text left centered. Draw text left simply draws a text placing the top left of the text box on the position given. <laughs> Perhaps I should call it draw text right as it would be easier to explain as draw the text to the right of the position given. Draw text left centered is the same, but it vertically centers the text box on the position given. Now let's get back to the paint function. Next, we want to work on the Y labels, but before that, we need to compute some ratios which would be useful for drawing the bars too. We want to compute the value range, which we can get by subtracting min from max. If min value is above zero, then our bars will go up from zero. So the pixel ratio should be height divided by max. But if the min value is below zero, then our bars can go down from zero. So the pixel ratio should be height divided by Y range. If min value is above zero, we reset it to zero because our bars are drawn from zero up. Now we can go into draw Y labels function. First thing to do here is to establish a step for Y labels. We want the labels to sit on some nice round numbers like 10, 100 or 1000. So I asked Copilot to do this and it came back with this function. What it does is quite simple, but elegant. It checks if the number of divisions yielded from the step value is greater than zero. If so, it iteratively finds a larger step. Also, if the divisions are less than two, it iteratively looks for a smaller step. Thanks Copilot mate, you saved me hours. Okay, back at draw Y labels function, we want to draw positive labels as well as negative labels. There could be a negative label when there is a loss because we draw the loss as a rect down from zero. Positive labels can be drawn like this. Y is incremented. Y is incremented from zero to the max by Y step we just calculated. Important thing to note here is the computation of y, y value. We carefully subtract min value from y and multiply by the ratio to get our y, y value. If the min value was zero, then it's just y multiplied by the ratio. So we are going from bottom to the top. If the min value was negative in the case of a loss, then we have little offset from the bottom and then we draw the labels and draw the horizontal lines too. For negative labels, it's the same process, but we start one step down from zero and decrement until min value. The rest is identical to positive label drawing. So back in the paint function, we want to draw the columns finally. We pass the Y ratio and the column width we computed earlier. Basic idea here is that we iterate through the data elements and draw column for each of the elements. Before that, let's establish a zero line because our revenue bar and profit or loss bar starts drawing from the zero. Here it is called Y offset. First, we draw the revenue bar. Left is chart left plus whatever we get from column width times the index of the column. Height is the revenue times the ratio. Now you might understand why it's good to create these ratios. 
if you look at the units of the ratio value, they are pixels per dollar or whatever uh, the monitor unit, the values are specified in. So when we multiply a monetary value like revenue with this, dollars cancel out and you end up with a pixel unit. Uh, there's a bit of algebra here, but uh, if you don't understand it, don't worry about it too much. Pay attention to how we compute the top of the rectangle. Notice the chart rect dot bottom. We have this because the coordinates go top to bottom on the screen. So we have to invert by subtracting from it. We use X padding to have a nice little gap between the columns. This is purely visual, so it need not get involved in the geometry computations. Next, we draw the profit or loss column over the revenue column. Revenue minus cost gives us the uh, profit or loss. Multiplying that by ratio gives us the pixel height. Rest is the same as above. Only difference is that we choose the color based on value being profit or loss. Almost there. Now we can finish this up with a nice legend at the bottom. We do that in draw legend. Here we draw a bunch of text labels and rectangles with the color for each of those labels. There's no complex geometry involved. We just draw the text and use its text box size to find the position to draw the next label. And that's it. Now let's change some numbers in the uh, data set and see if uh, we get the correct values. It looks like it is. Well done. So that was a bit long, but hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching and if you have questions, please ask them in the comments. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe uh, to the channel as it gives me the energy to continue creating videos for you. Tune in next time for another Flutter Canvas related video. Bye for now.